do this. Let's go live. Hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> I, I do the intro. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to CoreCast. I'm your host, Tim. And I'm Mikey. This is Sahil. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to a brand new exciting episode of CoreCast. Uh, if you haven't already, do join our Discord channel uh, so you can ask questions there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, where we do this every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, ask us questions during the episode. We'll get to them during that time. So without uh, further ado, uh, Tim and Mikey, last time we talked about like what we would consider as a contender for like the true quote unquote God's particle, um, as contentious of name that was, which was the Inflaton. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen the episode, check out our previous episode to hear more details about that. And we we were discussing how like this actually supersedes the Higgs in terms of its like place in the universe. Now we discussed that like what you know if if the higgs is not the god's particle like what 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 is where does that leave the higgs so i guess mikey you know what i'm just going to throw it off to you let's deal with the higgs what's going on is it, is it meaningless i mean i don't think the higgs is a bad it's like it's not a bad contender for the name god's particle it would be like top top 3 for sure um but yeah, I mean, they, like, you know, when we think of God's particle, we think of like the, you know, something that's, you know, responsible for creation. And that's firmly not what the Higgs is. In fact, the Higgs didn't even exist in the universe until it cooled, until like, you know, quite, quite a bit into uh, the life of the universe, um, you know, which is like, what, like a millionth of a second or something. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the Higgs is sort of responsible for, um, you know, uh, it's responsible for structure in the universe, but it's not responsible for, you know, just the creation of the universe itself. And so that's why, you know, Tim and I feel that um, it's not quite appropriate name for it to call it the God's particle. Um, it's not like, you know, so like we know the concept of like a keystone species, um, you know, like there was that like story about like Yellowstone National Park um, the wolves, and how like yeah. every, every <laughs> Yeah, like, and then they, they brought the wolves back to Yellowstone National Park, and then the wolves started eating, like, the rabbits, so the grass grew more, and then it gave rise to, like, a huge amount of, like, natural diversity, uh, biodiversity, um, and so that's actually, a, like, a much more appropriate analogy for what the Higgs does, right? So the Higgs didn't, like, create, create the landscape, but it's responsible for uh, structure and, and beauty arising within that landscape. So what should we call such a thing? Oh, so my question for you is like with the key with the keystone species, is that a species that gives rise to diversity? Is that the analogy? Kind of. It's kind of like the like a like one small, seemingly insignificant ingredient that when you put it in, it, it causes a chain reaction and you know generates a, a huge amount of biodiversity relative to what you would think. Yeah. I, I would I would say that the, the, if the Higgs wasn't there, like there will there will be some stuff in the universe, but just not as interesting or have complex interactions happening as you know as if uh, the Higgs the Higgs was around. So I think we feel that the Keystone particle is probably a more aptly aptly named. And I think is it true to say that if the Higgs didn't exist, then the universe would just be one big black hole? Uh no, I think it's not quite there. It's not quite there. And wouldn't, like, it like, be, they were just, wouldn't it? Well, okay. So, so, so here, here's a few things, right? So, so the Higgs, the Higgs particle, when we talk about the Higgs particle, we don't literally refer to the particle itself. I think this is more like a colloquially speaking as particle physicists, we're, we're really more interested in the Higgs field and not the particle. The particle is, it's kind of like a, a wiggling of the field. But of course, people are more familiar with the name particles, and that's that's why we we're referring to to uh, we're using that the same uh, lingo, right? You use the Higgs particle refer to the concept of the Higgs itself, right? And another thing is that well, the physics is what it is. We have the Higgs field and the associated Higgs particle, but what it does is um. Like the, the only time when, when it starts doing interesting things, it's kind of later in the creation story. So I think it's it's fair to say that even 
the Higgs, like the Higgs was always there, but up until the point the Higgs gets activated, like the the Higgs field is not really that necessary. I think that's fair, right? And even if the Higgs didn't activate the way they, it is, there's I don't think it would just be the universe will, will be a wash. There will be still interesting stuff. There will be there will be particles of light, photons. There could be there will be electrons. There might be. I guess there actually will be like. Um, would I say maybe not atoms, but oh, actually electrons could be really heavy or massless. But anyway, it wouldn't be totally void of anything, but it would be less interesting for sure. So like you wouldn't have chemistry without the Higgs. Oh, absolutely not. Right. Like you would definitely wouldn't have atoms. That for sure. Ah, uh, okay. So that's what you mean by interesting. You'd probably have like quote unquote fundamental particles, but not bound together. Yeah, but not necessarily just fundamental particles, right? Like you, you, we can speculate what happens. There, there might be might be things, objects like glue balls that we talk about that could exist. There could be um, that maybe for another <clears throat> episode. Um, there will be particles of light, right? There will be gravitons. Um, mm -hmm. Is that roughly it? There might be some really light particles floating around. Um, also, neutrinos, for example. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be totally empty. But I mean, certainly, you wouldn't really have neutrinos, though, would you? Uh, I mean, not in the sense that we understand it today. Yeah, well, well, well let, let, let me clarify. I think we should clarify a little bit, right? Like the Higgs, the Higgs field the part or the particle is responsible for a few things, but not everything. And obviously, if we take it out, things would change. But do we associate those changes, all those changes to the Higgs particle or not? I mean, that's a, that's a bit of interpretational. But certainly things would change. So I guess like how how does the Higgs being here give rise to like complicated things such as like chemistry and like atoms, for instance? Like how can I think I... it's fair to say that the Higgs is responsible for why everything is not super massive. Oh. Uh, or, or or exactly massless, right? So there's like in, in the universe, um, we have like certain scales, right? Um, like certain like energy scales. Um, and so there are certain particles like the photons and the gluons, which are are forced to be massless. So have absolutely zero mass. Mm -hmm. um, or close but, to it, close to it anyway. Yeah, but, um, oh gosh, this is hard to talk about. It's like I, totally like. Yeah, I think the, the universe tends to be like an all or nothing machine. Right, like if something has energy, yeah. it's got to have a damn lots of energy, and if if something doesn't have en a lot of energy, it would just be like almost no energy. There's 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 rarely these Goldilocks zone. It's like oh somewhere in between. Like like just just look at the things that exist in our everyday lives. Right, I got electrons in my thumb, which is way lighter than the proton, right, and the neutron is somehow comparable. And the interaction strength is not like overwhelmingly large. Like for example, when I clap my hands. I don't see nuclear fusion going on, like explosions happening all the time, which is which is what normally what you would expect from like a really typical universe that are really gun ho about interactions, right? It's either all or nothing. You either get some super crazy, massive nuclear explosions or like just like really boring, like not very interesting stuff. You don't get something in between, right? Like the hex is kind of like a the hex gives you a way to temper those differences, the, 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 the extremes between the really energetic with the almost like no energy, and it allows you to fill in the gaps. So you have, you have like layers and layers of particles with slightly less energy, one after the other. So it's almost like a ladder of possibilities. So we can have very interesting combinations of them. Like when you have more possibilities, you have more combinations, and more interesting things could happen. And ultimately, you know, this is where ultimately this leads to humans in some ways, right? Like, I think the simplest way to say it is that the, the Higgs is the reason why there's something in between zero and infinity. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just using like the Planck mass of like, cause it's, it's just, it's, it's so long, you know, it can yeah. effectively infinity. Yeah. But the universe basically, you know, it, it can be zero or it can be infinity, but you know, what's between zero and infinity? There's like three important numbers in math, right? There's zero, infinity, There's one. and one. <laughs> yeah. 
So the Higgs is the one. <laughs> it's the reason why there's something in between these two things. If there was no Higgs, there would be nothing to kind of like stabilize the place in between. And that's where we live. That's where chemistry lives. Mm. So you're saying, so if I were to give like a, like a cooking analogy to it, could you say that like the Higgs is the reason my oven can go from like, anywhere in between like zero degrees to like wherever, I mean, zero, you know, the starting point to like the maximum temperature anywhere in between versus like all or nothing. That's why I can make like really nice dishes. Kind know? of, except the Higgs doesn't work on a continuum. Um, hmm. It's it, like, I think it's more accurate to say that, um, uh, well, the more accurate now, it's getting a little weird now, but like if your oven only has two settings, like zero <laughs> and 10,000, but the thing that you need to cook to make humans <laughs> is like a hundred, just at a hundred. You need the that dial. Allows you to keep the yeah. switch at just at a hundred, at just the right temperature. As Tim mentioned, like a kind of a Goldilocks zone kind of thing. <clears throat> that that makes sense. That makes sense. That that is, you know, that actually gives a lot of credence to the notion of a keystone particle in this case. So I guess like. Like what what does it mean for like universe to be like like all? Is it just like one giant black hole? So it's either like one giant black hole or yeah. like close to that versus like everything is just super spread out. Yeah. So all photon yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, so the universe is pretty much like the gods of the universe really is gravity. I think we can mm -hmm. gravity sees all. It sees everything, observes everything. So a universe that's all in, basically, everything is turning on, means that everything has very strong gravitational interactions. And when that <laughs> happens, things are going to be like black holes, or if string theory was correct, it would just be really energetic, massive strings that are floating around, right? And these will all have strong gravity everywhere. Like, every everything would just move around each other through gravity, and the forces will... Like, all the forces will basically be similar to gravity. Right, so that's kind of like a killer of diversity, right? Like everybody's kind of kind of have a similar opinion in some ways, right? Well, roughly, mm -hmm. roughly speaking. So, so that's mm -hmm. what a what a, I guess, I guess a typical universe that goes all in is like, right? It's going to be like everything, yeah, like everything is. Is it like a black hole, basically? Either, either. I mean, either. universes are very violent by nature. I think that's yeah, the yeah. thing. The universe is the like it, what it wants to do is to shake everything up as much as it yeah. possibly can. And the Higgs is what allows it to just shake a little bit, yeah. which is just enough a shaking as much as what you need to like, you know, create is, is chemistry it fair, and is it, molecules. Is it, fair, is it fair to say it's like a kid like going on a super tantrum, just like ah, oh, just destroying everything? Basically. Yeah, that's what the universe wants to do. The universe <laughs> is like, you know, it wants to be pure chaos, right? Yeah, pretty the much. The Higgs is what allows it. To, it's it's like um, I don't know. Dial it down. It's like, down. It's like a pacifier for the for the for the for the <clears throat> universe that's exactly a kid. A pacifier. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. is there like a I guess an intuitive way to understand like how it goes about doing it? I understand there's like a lot of technical reasons, but is there like maybe a, a layperson explanation? It's a little similar to the inflaton, right? The inflaton has like this ball rolling down the hill analogy. The Higgs kind of also has that. I think that's a, is that a fair that's analogy? That's true, but I mean, actually the, the, the question that Sahil just asked is the question that the Large Hadron Collider failed to answer and yeah. therefore we may never not, we may never know the answer to that question. I mean, what Tim's saying about, you know, the ball rolling down the hill, like that's all true, but like the fact that it rolled down the hill and the bottom of the hill happened to be at exactly the location that it happens to be, but like we may never know the answer to that. Yeah. It's one of the biggest tragedies in modern part right. particle physics. Yeah, I, I guess that 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 answer, it's it, it answers the how, it doesn't answer the why. I guess that's the yeah. million dollar, maybe, I don't... Oh, I, I was asking how, not not why at the moment. Oh. Like, how, how do, like, how do we know it does this? Like, how do, how can we as a base value? It's my question. Attempts. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think, I think technically that's what the Large Hadron Collider is supposed to do, right? It's mm. be, 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 so, so the analogy of, of the inflaton rolling down the top of a hill is similar to the Higgs. The Higgs in in the early universe is very violent. It sits on this hill. It's just some some random place on the hill, and as the universe cools down, at some point the Higgs field kind of gets activated, right? And it starts rolling down this uh, hill and eventually settle down at the bottom. 
right? And the location of that bottom, exactly where that is, kind of fine tune, kind of fine tunes for you what the entire properties of the universe, right? It, it's just that's the knob on the oven. That's yeah, the bottom. Yeah. yeah. You can think of it as almost like the solar system, right? Like how come the earth is hospitable? At some point, rocks were hitting around each other. I mean, I have no clue how planetary science works, but at some point, maybe <laughs> the rocks were hitting each other, but it, the, the, the earth just happened to settle on some hospitable zone. And that's where we end up. And the Higgs is kind of like that. It's just going crazy. It's throwing a tantrum in the early universe. At some point, it kind of just calms down, settle down. And it just happens so that it settled down in this really Goldilocks zone. This, this Higgs potential, it's like 245, there's some units, GV, you can go online and search for it. And it, it just sits there. And then because of that, it calms down, then all these beautiful stuff can form. And at the Large Hadron Collider, we can collide particles to jiggle it just a little bit to create the Higgs boson, which we have to measure and prove to exist. And to, to look at all the other properties of the particles and, and to confirm that indeed, yeah, there's this, you know, uh, abstract, and in, in every sense is wheel, this abstract end wheel, like ball, this Higgs field kind of rolling around. We can jiggle it, we can probe it, and we, co we confirm to exist. I, I guess like, I guess um, I'm still trying to like wrap my arms around this. Like, does it, does it do that by interacting with everything? Like, how, how does Higgs exert such influence? Like what, what's so like, how does it make it so special? Like why? Why does it, why does like an electron not be able to do this? And why is it the Higgs that's able to do this? Because it's a scalar field. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I would say ordinary matter cannot do this because ordinary matter cannot exist everywhere. Like, like for example, electrons and protons, these are something we call fermions. It's a, it's the most common type of matter that we see. Pretty much everything we see are fermions, except particles of light, which is a little different. But these particles, inherently, um, there's maybe it's a little intuitive. There's this intuition that they, they kind of exist in discrete units, right? Like you feel your hand here. Like they, 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 you can't just have like, a, like an ocean of electrons flowing around. I mean, you could have an electron gas, but that, that would require a lot of energy. So they can't, these matter uh, <coughs> particles cannot permeate the entire space, right? For something to have the property of the Higgs field, it has to be everywhere. It has to be like omnipresent. Uh, indeed, the Higgs mm. field is like that. Like the fact that you can feel your hand, like your, because the fact that your hand is not moving at the speed of light, it's thanks to the Higgs field. It's slowing it down, right? And all the, pro well, maybe not everything, but the electrons and the quarks, the fact that we can feel they move is because you can think of this cosmic molasses, which is not the best analogy, but like, like every nanosecond or smaller, right? You can think of it as the particles are kind of chit-chatting and interacting with the Higgs field to, so that it gets slowed down. It, it, it pacifies all the craziness of the universe so that we get like a peaceful existence. I, I want to ask an, another question about that. Like, I thought, I thought like electrons, protons, quarks, all these fields like kind of exist everywhere. And just when you observe them, they're like localized because I thought like the quantum nature implies that they're not like, they're kind of spread out throughout right. the universe. Right, yeah. I think it's, 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 it's safe. like the, the Higgs is a very special particle. It's the only kind, such kind of particle we've ever seen before. Because mm -hmm. every particle that we know that makes up like, you know, electrons, quarks and stuff, they all have features. You could say they have like a face and those features determine what they're allowed to play with and what they're not allowed to play with. The mm -hmm. Higgs is essentially a faceless, featureless particle. So mm -hmm. it can play with anybody it wants to play with. Um, and I, I think it's exactly what you said, Sahil, like, you know, that, that allows it to kind of like interact with everybody at the same time so yeah. when it gets activated as tim says you know it kind of like pulls all of the other particles down to this you know magic temperature on the oven yeah. scale yeah and, i mean a requirement for, for 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 a particle to be able to do this like tempering you know and play and play nicely with the other particle is, is this probably that that it needs to be dialable right the higgs feel you, you, you can dial up and down kind of theoretically but like the electron field, you can't do that. 
I mean, you could, but if you if you dial up the electric, the electron field, you're just gonna pop out a crap ton of electrons. And if you do that for the whole universe, I mean, that's a bad universe, right? You don't want everywhere to be electrons popping out. Like that would take infinite amount of energy, right? But the Higgs field is not like that. It's kind of like like Mikey said. This is like this nice neutral, and mm. using, using a technical word, scalar field. That's kind of like a knob that can move up and down without, you know, creating too much chaos in the universe and su mm. in such a way that it can settle down somewhere to kind of like anchor in place. What? Is it too crazy of an analogy to say that like in this, like just going back to the oven thing, that like, you know, the electron is like a turkey and quarks are like mashed potatoes. The Higgs is the heat that <laughs> <laughs> like cooks it, right? Yeah. So it's like very, very different. Like the heat cooks everything, you know, it cooks the turkey, it cooks the mashed potatoes because it's just like this yeah. blob of energy. Um, whereas the other things, they have like, you know, more more specific structure to them. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't throw yeah. just a bunch of turkey in the oven. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> I, I guess one, one question I have is like, why couldn't photons or gravitons do this? Like... They, they permeate the universe like they're everywhere they have faces yeah so so fo so photons actually have more features than you think because mm. if, if you have ever worn sunglasses photons has kind of like uh has kind of like a polarization polarization right mm. so like they, they have shapes in some in some sense right so if photons would do, do something like that i mean people could come up with theories that does something like that if mm. photons were to do to, to play a similar role, then the universe will have some kind of pre preferred directions or shape, right? Because photons is a shape. If the photon, let's say, freezes in this direction to the left, <laughs> then then to the right would look a little different from the left, or the up would look a little different from the down. But we don't see mm -hmm. that. So that's not possible, right? So mm -hmm. in some sense, we kind of see this. The thing is, we see this featureless dial that we observe in the universe, and like we need. And, and that's what makes the Higgs so special. It kind of has this neutral featureless face that that gets dial and kind of, you know, drive um, drive all the different properties of, of everybody else. I think that's actually a really good way to say it. The Higgs is the only particle that we've ever discovered in the universe that has no shape. It's a shapeless yeah. particle, which shouldn't even really exist. I mean, it's just weird to see such a thing. It's like literally meeting someone that doesn't have a face. Like, it's just, there's no shape. Yeah. Is, is there an easy way to explain what a shape means for a particle? Like a geometry of a particle or like how- Typically we mean angular momentum. Like it's not, every particle is spinning at some rate or not spinning, well, it, it has literally, every particle has a direction. Yeah. Like so, up, down, but the, yeah. the Higgs is the only one that has no, no apparent spinning. No, it has no axis. Yeah, it has no mm -hmm. axis of rotation. Yeah, for a particle, for ordinary particles, if you look at it from a different orientation, like, like let's take a light coming at you, you look at the sunglasses, you rotate the sunglasses, you see different properties. And that's true for almost every particle that we see. Electrons, protons, an MRI machine uses some of that, right? Like, and that's how they detect, I don't know, molecular behaviors in your body because <laughs> the orientation can change and that, that can allow the MRI to see things, right? But the hex, yeah, like Mikey said, it's really strange. It no matter which way you're looking at it, you can't distinguish it. It's all it looks the same. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like a faceless particle, right? I think shapeless is the better word. I right? think face, it's yeah, really, shapeless. Really yeah, it has no geometry to it. Although we should <laughs> add that the inflaton is also another such particle, although it has not been confirmed to exist yet. We strongly believe that something like that exists, but unlike mm -hmm. the Higgs, this the inflaton. Similarly, that's what also makes the inflaton so god like that, you know, the fact that it has it's exactly. not another particle hypothetically that has no shape is what allows it to play such a such a deep and diverse role in every in the life of every right. single other particle. Yeah. Hmm. Is, is there anything that the anything that doesn't interact with the Higgs? It's like permeating, but does it does it touch every like part of our lives? Right. That I think that's that's the it tricky question. More. Yeah, that's the tricky question. The Higgs doesn't necessarily have to interact with everything, so that's that's mm -hmm. why we kind of kick it off the God's particle list, because not everything really interacts with the Higgs. 
So un- unlike gravity. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so you have to play by some rules. Mm-hmm. And I would say pr- the Higgs plays well with most of the particles we see. Like Micah, you mentioned neutrinos. Um, I think that's a fair statement. It doesn't mess with neutrinos. I think that's fair. <clears throat> They're not friends. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I mean, there's probably more than one Higgs. There, probably. There might, there's probably probably an infinite number of Higgs. It can't be can't be a god particle. Well, I don't know about infinite, <laughs> but I, I would I would bet that there are multiple. I mean, the, the, in some sense, the infoton is kind of somewhat similar to the Higgs, but also not quite. But so I guess like uh, what? Okay, so I guess one elephant in the room that we didn't uh, we didn't really uh, talk about until now, which is I think how they at least how I knew about the Higgs when I was studying physics was it gives rise to mass. So what what's with that? Like, how does what does the Higgs have to do with mass? Mass is exactly that temperature. Like the yeah, um, yeah. in this analogy, mass is cooking. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, mass just kind of roughly tells you the amount of energy an interaction will involve. And it's really just going off Einstein's theory, E equals mc squared. You know, the mass of a particle kind of dictates the kind of parties that it can go to in some, in some sense, if you think of it this way, right? It's almost mm-hmm. like there's this hierarchy of the particle realm. You know, you, you, got, you, got, you got particles that are really light, and they're, they're kind of like a different ca- class of citizens, and maybe particles that are really massive. I don't know. Would you call them? Lower? No, the, the, the mass of a particle is exactly linear, linear, linearly proportional to the strength with which that particle can talk to the Higgs at a party. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, more it, conversations it has with the Higgs, the more massive it is. The the less conversations it has with the Higgs, the the less massive it is. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I'm saying without the Higgs, then the mass, the mass, almost this currency of, of interaction. Mm-hmm. It could be it could be everywhere pretty much you know it's dictated by gravity which is pretty much the the overarching <clears throat> overlord and and when we were mentioning the universe kind of likes just things to be super energetic it's all or nothing right without the higgs to kind of create this temperament all the things we see in the real real life would either be really close to massless just flying away at the speed of light or really massive that we will have no access to these are like I don't know, Beverly Hills celebrities that will never reach, right? These are like otherworldly <laughs> particles. So there'll be nothing in between, right? The, the Higgs is kind of like, ah, eh, just like, with j- it's got just enough oomph, but not like overwhelming amount to kind of bring the, bring that, bring those scale down. So it gives mm-hmm. reasonable masses to particles, like not something crazy large and not zero, somewhere in between. Is this, is this too crazy of an analogy? Ima- imagine a party where you only have two types of people. People that are yelling, Aah! and then people that are just <laughs> dead silent. There's only two types of people at this party. The Higgs enters the party, and it says, you, you, me, you, 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 you. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to talk to you this much. I'm going to talk to you a little less. I'm going to talk to you a little less. I'm going to talk to you a little less. And just just our group here, we're going to we're gonna form... All, all of everything that exists in the universe together, uh, and they form a company with some hierarchy, uh, <laughs> and that's kind of like the story. And then you know, yeah, yeah. everyone's still out there yelling, and and, and the, the you know, the silent people are selecting silent, but just this select group, this select subset of uh, yeah. people at the party, you know, go forth and create everything that we know. I think that's fair. But of, of course, the mystery is remain that why does cert- do certain things like to talk to the Higgs more than others? That's yeah. a mystery. Well, and how did the Higgs get to the party in the first place? Like, exactly. Where did it come from? So those are mystery, but but these these are just mechanisms, right? Like, and we have discovered the Higgs boson. We know it exists. That's just how the nature works. You know, there's a Higgs in the party and it, you know, welcomes everybody and we have a chit chat and have a nice universe. No, it doesn't work on everybody, right? It only, you know, there's a lot, right, of, there's right, exactly. a lot of people that it's excluding. There are some who are not invited to the party that still exist in the universe. So this, but they're just like yelling and raging, and we don't care about them because they're or, not saying anything. Or dead silent, sense. like the neutrinos. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Or even gauge particles. <clears throat> 
So, so Mikey, if, if I eat a lot of junk food and like I gain weight, does that mean I interact more with the Higgs? It means that you have, yeah, that it means the number of things in your body that interacts with the Higgs is your, your overall interaction with the Higgs is, is greater. I mean, the interaction of the particles that make up Sahil with the Higgs right. boson <laughs> has definitely increased. Right. The, the, per part, the per particle interaction rate didn't change. It's that it's, I see. It's, yeah. But of course, the overall, yeah, the expectation. <laughs> So that's fair. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's totally fair. So we're uh, we're almost at time. I want to I want to ask you guys if you want to leave the audience with any uh, parting thoughts before we head out. Tim, you go first. Okay, you look like you're ready. Yeah, yeah. I I would say even though we kind of slightly demoted the Higgs particle as the God's particle, you know, I'm hoping that we didn't undersell its importance, right? And in fact, this is the Higgs particle underscore one of the most perplexing theoretical problem in theoretical physics. And no one has the, has the answer. And this is, you know, we've alluded to a little bit, this is called a hierarchy problem. Like why is the Higgs the way it is? But still, if you ignore that, that problem, the Higgs is here and it's, it, it kind of tempers our universe and our existence has to be thanks to the Higgs. And sometimes, sometimes all the mysteries aside, um, personally, I just like to take a moment and think about, you know, we live in a pretty darn special universe, especially with, with, the, with the Higgs field floating around. And this is something that keeps you awake at night. Be like, like, why is this Higgs field here and doing its job? I mean, that's a really perplexing mystery, but also kind of, um, I don't know. Kind of satisfying in a way, is it? Kind of like feels, makes you feel a little special, but maybe not that special. Yeah. Mikey, yeah, yeah. Sure. I would I would just echo exactly what Tim said. Maybe just, I don't know, maybe try to find a different way to say the same thing. <laughs> um, but like, just to connect it to what we said last week, right? Like the Higgs didn't give rise to everything in the universe. If, if uh, we have any idea about how that happened, that, that the credit to that would go to the Inflaton. <clears throat> But the Higgs is the reason why this stuff became personable, humanable. Is that a word? Humanable. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like it's it's really like a particle that's been just absolutely tailored um, for the existence of complex organisms in life and, and humans. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we definitely owe our existence to it. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's not the thing that set the match, that set the spark, that gave rise to this whole thing. Um, but it is the, it is the particle responsible for bringing us to where we are today. And so, yeah, like I said, I know top three candidates if you're going to call something the god particle, yeah. but probably not number one. I, I guess, I guess maybe one thing that comes to mind, right, for me uh, personally, like I know the Higgs particle, Higgs field looks sounds so abstract. To a lot of audience like i've never heard of it i didn't learn this in high, in high school or in or even in college probably but look for something so fundamentally important to our existence i think it deserves some respect and like some resources to learn what the hell that's about right and a lot of people sometimes ask us like what the hell is the point of particle physics well this is the point the higgs exists we want to study it and i think hopefully this episode shows the audience that look you know it deserves a little more recognition uh than it does like the higgs field like it's it's almost as important as one plus one equals two right it it concerns of our existence depends on it like how can it be any more important although if i was a betting man i wouldn't <laughs> bet that we'll ever know the answer to that in our lifetimes <laughs> that <Sadly. laughs> Not in our lifetime, but maybe in a few more generations. Hopefully, we'll we'll find out, and I look forward to that. I'll be dead by then, but <laughs> I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, that well said, well said, Tim. Great, great way to end this episode. I'll be dead by then. All right. So I want to thank everybody for joining us, and we'll see you all next week. See you all next week.